Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm at Brown Down Camp, just inside Solent, opposite the Isle of Wight, in between Portsmouth and Southampton. Two rods out and I'm fishing. I'm fishing and my buddy, Ben, has travelled up from Bournemouth. So he's travelled up from Bournemouth to try out this area. It's a new area for him. I fished here before. You know when you just get that feeling that it just might be good? The water's really coloured, it's getting stirred up, it's overcast, it's a midday high tide and we're fishing the tide down and possibly down to low tide and then just about an hour of the turn back in. Really looking forward to it, been looking forward to this one all week. So, pulley rigs, bluey, my favourite. Didn't bring any garfish, didn't have a chance to prep any garfish yesterday. Rod's been out for about five, ten minutes and I've had a slack line bite. I'm trying to be as kind as I can to this little critter because he's he's not keen on being caught. I've got myself a nice little schoolie bass. Nice little schoolie bass, a lot of fight in him, give a good account of himself and I'm pleased. Difficult conditions, we've been here ten minutes and I've caught a fish before Ben has. <laughs> You can see Ben's shouter behind me, over my left shoulder. He's fishing. I'm catching. And this was so lightly hooked. So lightly hooked. The hook, I haven't taken the hook out yet. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. But that is about as, as lightly hooked as you can get. In fact, the hook has literally just fell out. Nice little schoolie bass. Gonna get him back in. Happy days. So I've just had that little school bass. I don't know, pound and a half, pound and three quarters, something like that. Um, just had that little school bass and I caught a fish before Ben. So me and Ben's just been chatting. Come up with our tactics for today. How we're gonna fish. We've both lowered our rods down, angled the tripods a little bit just to keep the tips down a little bit. The wind is quite strong, I think it's between 23 and 28 miles per hour today. But it's overcast and it's fishable. It's not only fishable, it feels quite fishy. I'm running with two rigs that are the same, so I'm running with pulley rigs today. Just seem to suit the, con suit the conditions well, castable, and present the bait at distance and feel like we need a bit of distance today. But because we're fishing with rigs, or I'm fishing with rigs that are exactly the same, and I've deliberately made them exactly the same, the hook lengths are incompatible as well. So it means I can fish with the two rods out, baited up and ready to go, or in the water fishing. And then I'm fishing, with, prepping a third hook length. Prepping a third hook length, putting my bait on it, and then just having it ready. So when I bring my next rod in for its bait check in a minute, I can just squat the baited section over onto it, cast it out, bring the used bait back to here, tidy it up, clean it up, rebait it, and have that ready. Just find it helps. One, to keep you busy in between when you're doing stuff. I like to be busy. Keep busy. And also, if you do catch a fish, you can just unclip the end, bring it to here, and look after it. Take pictures, make sure it's unhooked nicely, all those kind of things. But you can also bait and get your rod out fishing again. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm going to bait this up. And my bait of choice today is bluey. And I prepped this yesterday. So I cut it to size, shaped it a little bit made sure it was good and I am looking at a four row hook camasan and a circle hook for the panel it's just loose on the panel I'm going to drop that all the way out of the way so I don't hook myself accidentally just introduce it and lay it on the skin side I like to have the hook the bottom hook on the skin side and I'll get my bait and elastic not very well prepared here am I 
the lighting's not brilliant, I am struggling with lighting today because it's overcast but there's bright sunshine in the distance and, and all the other excuses that us people that try and film or photographers use for what they're doing but lighting's being difficult today. To make sure that that hook stays presentable and proud I tend to wind on a few turns just around where the eye of the hook is. If you wind on round there it tends to help to lock it into place because it's a flat section and it just holds it in place. It works for me and it's turned into a little bit of a routine that I do now. Just wiping my hands because it's very cold. It's all right as long as your hands aren't wet. As soon as they're wet and because it's windy it has quite an effect. Now one thing I do struggle with and I would like some guidance if anyone's an expert on this or does this. So if that was just a normal straight hook, putting it in as a panel would be really easy. But this little bit I tend to struggle with. So I put my few turns into it. I go to an area of a very soft bait that's got some elastic in there. And I put the circle hook in. And that is my bait. So this hook length now with a 4-0 camasan and a 4-0 circle hook on its length I'm going to go and put over by the tripod when I reel in in a minute to do my bait check I'll clip this on, cast out and bring the other hook length back pretty much do the same again Ben's just had a ting he saved the blank with a ting yay no blank <laughs> I'm thinking of doing something a little bit different with my bait. What can I try? Try and mix it up a little bit. In fact, no. I'm going to stick with bluey. Bluey's always been good for me here. I'll stick with the bluey, see how it gets on. And then later on I might mix it up a little bit and start cocktailing baits up a little bit. So, what have we done here? That last bait, hook length just unclipped like we discussed just a minute ago it's come back pretty much undisturbed one thing I have noticed when I was in the workshop yesterday I had some old elastic some old elastic that I've obviously put to one side because I didn't like it so I thought I'd use it up it's been a nightmare <laughs> I really don't now we understand why I wasn't using it before it's brittle, it's not elastic when it needs to be elastic. When you want to take it off, it doesn't come off. I know now why I didn't like it. I want to go back to the workshop later, tomorrow, tonight. I'm going to throw it in a bin. Another bluey sausage, wrapped up in elastic. Really, really juicy literally the, the, the juices are, are running out of it and it's still half frozen I don't make any attempt to protect my hook or line by hiding it inside if it was defrosted I'd be tempted to feed it onto the hook because it's not and it's such a soft bait anyway as soon as you start to struggle with it you, send, you tend to make a bit of a mess of it or I do at least. So like we discussed earlier, the only place I'm putting elastic, and this is good elastic by the way, is around the eye of the hook to secure that bottom hook. I'm a little bit overzealous with the elastic sometimes. So that keeps the bottom hook proud. And on this hook length, I haven't got a circle hook at the top. And I do these things deliberately just to try and tease out what seems to work better. You know, the same trace but with, with minor differences between them and just see what, what seems to work. So I've been running two pulley rigs at the moment but the hook lengths have got three slight variations between them. And that is how I'm presenting this sausage bait, Bluey. 
on a hook, on a hook snoot, ready for when I bring the next rod in. Lots of people out walking. The wind and the cold hasn't stopped them. If I'm all slight at an angle with the camera, it's really difficult because the beach is on a slant. I'm on a slant. The camera's on a slant. Need another fish. Ben's beating me now. I need another fish because Ben's beating me now. I've got one bass, he's got two tings. If we was playing top trumps, I think my bass trumps his two tings. Right, I'm going to go and get this ready. I'm going to go and check the other rod. Let's go on the camera to comments. Camera comments are always good fun. New video went up last night. Hope you've all watched it. Chesil Beach, West Bexington, mid-November. It's a cracker. Some absolutely beautiful skies. It was, it was a gorgeous day. Can't, can't emphasize that enough. It was really good. I've had some really nice comments, really nice favorable comments. Um, a lot of people seem interested in flounder fishing. I've got a really good idea of somewhere I'd like to go for flounder fishing. I used to fish it as a kid, with spoons, tipped with rag, and we used to catch dozens of them. Literally, I know those days are long gone, but as a nostalgic fishing trip, I'd like to give it another go. So, Anthony Llewellyn, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, it's given some suggestions of where to try for flounder fishing and some particular good flounder marks. Appreciate those, really appreciate those. Really looking into that one closely. And Troy Wales uh, made a comment about uh, the two pound whiting off Chesil Beach. I was still chuffed to bits for that. There's whiting, tings, we all get plagued by them. But a two pound whiting, that was a little cracker that one. Um, Scott Harris. Scott, you've gone out and bought yourself a fishing reel, haven't you? You've gone out and bought yourself a fishing reel on the back of me liking mine. But you're already looking at them anyway, I know that, because we've discussed it. But I hope you do like them, because I'm really pleased with my pens. Pen Surf Blaster 2s. Good reels, I like them. I like them a lot. Um, who else have we got here then? Trodge fishing. Would like to see some white in. <laughs> Trodge. I've seen your videos, I watch them regularly. I do like them, I do like those, they're really good videos. You do not want to get plagued by the tings. Stick with your bass and all you have a nice, really good stuff that you got down, got down there, but you do not want to be plagued by the tings. The Kid, so one of the guys whose, whose YouTube name is The Kid, um, he liked the video and he seems to feel like Whiting are taken over from Cod or Codlin in videos and, and video time on YouTube. It's because there's so many of them about. <laughs> there are thousands and millions and trillions of them around here. Um, Wayne Swatton. Swatton? Swatton? Please. I, I hope I've got your surname correct there. Wayne Swatton. Just bought himself one of the IMAX jackets. So, because I haven't got my jacket on at the moment, these are the salopettes. You know, the high bibs with the braces. Um, and because this bit all around here on the salopettes doubles up when the jacket's on in an area that's super warm, it keeps all your core warm. It's really warm gear. I've actually taken the jacket off because it was so warm earlier. I'm getting close to needing it back on. But that's the beauty of it. So Wayne has recently bought himself the jacket. He likes it. I see a lot of people with this kit on, to be honest. Danny O commented because I made the comment about my pulley rig sometimes tangling up and the three beads, that's the Ian Clark recommendation. Um, said that he's been trying a little bit of rig tubing on the pulley. I tried rig tubing and I just didn't get on with it. I understand what you're thinking is and why it might work for you because I had the same thought process. I thought I'd try rig tubing and that would help to keep the hook snood out. I just didn't get on with it. So I hope that's working for you, or if you get the opportunity to try the three beads. And just because it's on my 
uh, news feed for YouTube, I'm just going to mention it at the moment. Inglorious Fishing. Inglorious Fishing, Turbot and Brill. Amazing. I've been watching him catch those Turbot and Brill. I've never even seen one close up. I've never caught one. Um, I'd love to see one. I've been speaking to someone about a mark possible to fish from the shore for Turbot. Not Brill, Turbot. And that sort of covers the recent comments, so I enjoy going through them. I reply to them all. I'm that smaller channel that I can do that. Um, I do reply to all the comments and I look forward to hearing some more. Happy days. Time for something else. Time for a brew. And guess what? With a brew, I need a chocky bicky. What have I got? I can't remember what Mrs. Williams gave me. Mrs. Williams gave me some plain chocolate digestives. Ben and I have both just hooked up with Whiten at the same time. But the main reason for showing you this is quite unusual really. He wasn't even hooked. But how did you get him in here you say? Do you remember me saying about the elastic that I didn't like earlier on? He was hooked on the elastic. He had a tiny little piece of elastic hooked around his tuff. Hooked around his tuff and I brought him in on that. <laughs> That's just amazing to me that. I'm going to have to rig some lighting, aren't I? Because it's all very dark. So, little tiny ting, just about to go and put him back. With little flappy tail. Big mouth, flappy tail. I'm going to go and get this one back. So I've had a bass and a ting. Ben's had four tings, I think. Anyway, I'm going to get him back, get my line out. Temperatures drop right down now. Um, it's not freezing, but it's pretty cold. Wind chills um, making all the difference. You can see how cold it is. So I've rigged my light in. And I don't know if you can see in the distance, but the light on my tripod is something new. So one of the guys at work cycles into work and he bought these twin LED Cree lights for the front of his bike with a rechargeable battery pack. £20. Took a bit of an interest in them and had a look. Really well made. And I thought I've got the perfect place for that. Don't like using tip lights. I've got it lighting up the tips of my rod. It's a bit of overkill at the moment because it's not pitch black. But I thought while I remember I'll definitely mention it. A lot nicer to film now I've got my light rigged. I also use that for my general sorting out of my gear as well because that light gives out a nice soft white light if that makes sense. Ties definitely turned on its way out. We've both had tings, Ben and I. I've had a ting now. I caught a ting not on the hook but on the elastic on the bait. <laughs> it was snagged around its tough. So I'm going to bait up my other rig now. I'm going to do a check on the other line in a minute. Just keep my eye on it. Lovely colours in the sky again. Glad the camera picks these out. Because it's not just about the fishing for me. Part of it's the preparation. Part of it's the fishing itself. Part of it's the social aspect. And I feel it's just good for the soul. You know, a man on a beach, weather, elements, sky, the chance to reflect and think on things. Another cracking evening. If you'd have looked at the web forecast for today, you wouldn't have come. You wouldn't have come fishing, you'd have gone, Mark, do you know what? I respect your enthusiasm, but nah, I'm going to stay in or go to the pub. I understand if you go to the pub. No, I don't want to go. It's horrible. Blah, blah, blah. It's lovely. <laughs> it's getting towards the witching hour now. Talk about it a lot just starting to get dark we know the tings are queuing up queuing up with dinner plates knives and forks waiting for our bait they'll be here soon 
And what else? I don't know. There's a chance of decent bass off this mark. A friend of mine's caught a decent bass off this mark. It's having a bit of a tidy up, doing two things at the same time, multitasking. I've had a brew, that helped warm me up. I've had a pie, I've had a cake, I've had some chocolate biscuits, and I've got some soup. I've got some soup in case it get too cold. I'm saving that as a as almost like an emergency soup. I'm gonna save it as an emergency soup. Right, I'm gonna prep some bait. I'm gonna prep some bait and do a bait check. But I thought I'd do a little bit of filming just to capture that amazing sky. I give it 30 minutes and then it's gonna be pitch black and it'll be a different scenario altogether. I've got my coat on because it's cold. I've got my hat on because I'm bold. What more can I say? <laughs> oh. That looks very much like a ting bite. Yeah. Right Rod, looks like a ting bite. I better go and have a look and I it's probably dark now <laughs> in the true to form temperatures dropped with it as well. I've got my next bait prepped on that hook snood. It's quite a small bait this one. Small bait with lots of hooks. Doesn't mean it won't catch though. And there it is. And there's my hook snood. Just a swivel on the end look. And on my rig body, I've got a Gemini clip, and I clip it onto that. So that's my next bait, waiting to go on whichever rod comes in next, whether it either catches a fish, or whether it's due for a bait swap out. I've already done the right rod, but the right rod looks like it's having little ting bites, so it might end up coming back in again. Left rod hasn't done anything. Now if you've watched any of my videos in the past, left rod sometimes needs a bit of a telling off. I'm quite conscious that when I mentioned the um, pulley panel rig modification, if you like, with the three beads added that I saw on Ian Clark's video, I was a little bit reluctant to show it, to be honest, because it's, it's not my idea, it's Ian Clark's idea. But, as long as that's acknowledged, and it's acknowledged that I'm not trying to steal this sort of stuff, it's not my glory, it's someone else's, um, I thought I'd show it. So, there's the three beads and there's my Gemini clip, clip and my swivel to my hook snood. So when your pulley rig is clipped down and the two lines run parallel all the way down to the weight, these three beads sit tightly up against whatever you use for your pivot. And when they release and the weight comes off the hook snood, it pushes them out and it works really well so just because I'm a little child and I like it I'll show you it again so your lines are, are, are running parallel and they're all clipped down and you cast it out and it's gone a gajillion miles and you're really pleased but then when you reel it back in if you didn't have these sometimes you have a bit of a wrap and a, and a bit of a tangle but on this when it hits the water and it does what it's supposed to do it pings it right out. How cool is that? So there's your hook fishing all the way over here and here's your weight gripping and does what it's doing over there and never the two shall meet. It's good isn't it? It's good stuff. I like it. I love it when the stuff works. Ben and I have talked tactics and this is going to be my last bait for the second of my rods. I just baited the other one up. This is going to be the last bait on that rod. And the reason why I'm even declaring that is sometimes the fish can hear that and they're like, oh, last bait, he's on his way. He doesn't want to play anymore. So this is going on, last chance saloon. Anything else out there that fancies a bit of a play, now's the time. Because within the next half hour, 40 minutes, we're going to be packing up called last cast and a real marauding and he was on the end <laughs> I didn't even see the bite I'm getting that much wind bounce even though the rods are canted over um, he's a small doggy 
pleasantly formed. Wiry is normal. I don't want to get sandpapered, but there he is. You see his eyes? Magical. They do look like something out of Alien. They've got like pupils as well. So like, I know everyone's got pupils, to, but you know, for fish, they do look totally different. And obviously those big scent pits at the front and his little grid. Very, very fine teeth, like really small, like plates, plates of teeth. Then his big flippy flappy fins. Yeah, I don't mind catching a doggy. I don't like being plagued by doggies, but get this one back. And then I've got my last chuck. So yeah, look at his eyes. Ooh. See if the camera will focus on there. There you go. I'm out of focus and he's in focus. Doggy. And I'm back again. <laughs> back in the room. Right, I'm gonna get him back and get my last chuck on. Rods are in now, but nothing else caught. <laughs> the last chance saloon rod didn't quite pay off. So all the rods are back in baits all packed up. I'm just in the process of packing all the gear up. Ben's doing the same. If you like the video please like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon <laughs> on another fishing adventure. <laughs> so for me bye for now and I'll see you again soon.